had a little break. That, this is kind of an excitable hive. I had to suit up and uh, we moved the camera back. But anyway, I, I've moved some frames from this box that I'm emptying over to there. I saw some young larvae, which made me more positive. You want to, you're hoping for a new queen with, with young larvae, but even better is if they start uh, supersedure or swarm cells. And this frame has the Holy Grail on it. If, if you can catch it, Larry, there's these little peanut shapes here. And those are queen cells in development. This hive got to be high enough numbers that they were ready to go out and start a new colony, leave the colony to half the bees with brood, and also have to get them a queen started so that in about 15 days they would have a queen leader. This is what I'm really hoping for. I'm going to get this comb back in that original site which will also have a good batch of the, the uh, foragers returning there. I will try to place it somewhat centrally so there's good heat to keep the brood going. And I'm going to leave a little space there because those queen cells are bigger. Instead of probably having a 10 frame hive, that one will be nine to allow for that space. What I did, I had that bum box. Uh, I robbed all the frames out of those and split it between those two boxes there. We did find uh, two good uh, queen developing egg cells. So I, I split that between those two colonies. That third box is as it sat before. And by the number of larvae, most of the queen work had been in this lower one. So I'm a little questionable whether I'll have a queen going in there, but they will start. And uh, even if that, that doesn't have a young enough larvae to start a queen, they're making honey like crazy. If, if I find out that it's queenless, I can either go buy a queen or get one from a friend. And worst comes to worst, I can just add that uh, deep box back to another hive. That'll be, be good workers, good honey. There's, there's lots of honey in all these for not hitting the main honey flow yet. They've done well with the, just the fruit trees, the dandelions, and the early blooming things. In my hand here, is what is called a, a drone frame. It's plastic, which I, as I told you in previous times, bees don't like. I, I tried this in this hive and in the other hive last year. This hive wouldn't touch this. Now this year they have filled out with comb and it's full of, of drone larvae or half full. The, the idea with this is, is that the Varroa mite likes bigger comb size, likes to lay its eggs in drones, drone uh, pupae because they take an extra th three days to develop. That gives that uh, mite time to develop more too. So the integrated pest management goal here was to let them go ahead and draw this out, lay drone eggs. That would attract the varroa mites. Before this could hatch, you remove it and freeze it. Put in your deep freeze for 48 hours. It kills all those drone cells, which will probably be a trap for the varroa mite. You uh, take it back out. You don't even have to clean it up. Put it back in the hive. The, the bees will take care of it, and they'll go again. <coughs> Excuse me. The, uh, the time frame is that you just need to get in there before the 24 days before they've hatched again and repeat the cycle. Have them filled out, 
close to hatching, freeze them, and start over. Now, uh, what I, I think what it's mostly done for me is created an excess of drones and uh, more than you need to fertilize the queen if she goes out on a mating flight. Ross Conrad in Natural Beekeeping says, I, I can't see killing bees for any reason. He's a bit of a, he's a Jainist Buddhist, so uh, that kind of harm is unacceptable to him. And, and I, I can see why, but I don't like it for the plastic. I'm not gonna put it back in. I'm not gonna mess with it anymore. These hives are split up. I am going to put the queen excluder back on number three. And then I'm going to put that uh, honey super back on three. I would split this honey out be between the hives, but as I looked at the uh, frames, there was a good distribution and actually, well, actually a little extra honey back in brood combs than I absolutely need, but that just means they've got food and they can continue on about their, their merry way. This is an inside cover, and that gives you something small and maneuverable to, to put on so you don't smash bees. I, I try to be very careful. If you've noticed my, my rate of movement, <laughs> and if you're old enough, uh, in our boyhood there was a TV series called Land of the Giants, and in it the, uh, the premise was Earth travelers had gone to another planet where it was pretty much a planet like ours, except everything was 10 times as big. <laughs> and we would laugh at the, some of the special effects things that the people would run down in rabbit burrows and the giants would try to reach down after them and we'd laugh at how slow the hand moves. But that's how slow you want to move amongst the bees. If you're moving at that speed, you can get it done. If you move at your regular speed or a faster speed, they trigger off that motion and they'll just leap to your hand and either check you out or sting you, depending on the mood they're in. Okay. I'm gonna cap back up in this, this one hive and inside cover are just a little bit larger, so I gotta match things up accordingly. This is hive number two had a, a good uh, developing queen cell. As did hive number one. And try and, and look as I might, I did not locate the queen today. I know she's alive and well because there was a, a nice young larvae and also a cell that the other bees decided to develop into a queen cell. <laughs> 